All right, we're going to attack this integral with a technique called partial fractions decomposition. But part of the purpose of this video is to explain why the technique works in the first place. So our plan here is going to be to break this down into uh, simpler integrands, each one of which has one factor of the denominator. So let me just go ahead and do the factoring real quick. So this is the same as the integral of x over, and then I'm hoping this factors into two binomials. And it's just a guess and check process. So I have x squared, and then I need my cross terms to add up to x, but I need my constants to multiply to negative 2. So I think if I had a positive 2 here and a negative 1 here, that would give me x squared plus 2x minus x. That's a positive x. That's good. Minus 2. So that works. Now what my hope is is to express this fraction here as a sum of two fractions, each of which has one of these factors in its denominator. Then each of those pieces will be easy to integrate. But what I want to do before I get into the, um, into the details of the process is go back to why it should work. So here's a simple fraction addition problem, and it might seem a little weird to see that in the middle of a calculus class. But by messing around with this, we can motivate the whole technique of partial fractions decomposition. So 1 third plus 2 fifths, how do we add this? We have to get a common denominator. I'm going to supply a missing 5 to the first fraction by multiplying it by 1, just written as 5 over 5. Second fraction, multiply by 1, written as 3 over 3. And now I have 5 over 15 plus a 6 over 15, which then gives me 11 over 15. Okay, why did I do that? Because really what we're doing with partial fractions decomposition, it's like we're presented with a, the fraction 11 over 15, and then we notice, oh, 15 factors into 3 times 5. And then I think to myself, well, maybe this could have come from some a over 3, some fraction with a 3 in the denominator, plus a b over 5, some fraction with a 5 in the denominator. If we do this successfully, then we've broken this single fraction down into two pieces that have simpler denominators. And that's all we're doing with these rational expressions. So let's flip back to our integral. And what I'm hoping here is that this rational expression in the integrand is going to break up. So I'm going to write it like this, x over x minus 1 times x plus 2 equals some unknown a over x minus 1 plus some b over x plus 2. And now it's just a matter of algebra. Can we actually solve for what a and b are? So what I'm going to do in this case is multiply both sides by the least common denominator, which is sitting right here on the left-hand side. And that's going to kill all the fractions in the problem. On the left-hand side, uh, both factors will cancel, and I'll be left with an x. On the right-hand side, when I apply x minus 1 times x plus 2 to this factor, the x minus 1 will cancel and leave me with an a times x plus 2. In the final term, the x plus 2 cancels and leaves me with a b times x minus 1. Now, there's a couple of techniques for solving for a and b. And I'm just going to try to illustrate roughly 50-50. I'll, I'll choose one or the other. The one I'm going to choose here is to go ahead and expand both of these terms and then collect together all the, the like terms. So I have x equals, OK, so I have an ax and I have a bx. So that gives me an a plus b times x. Those are my linear terms. And then I have my constant terms. There's a, a 2a and a negative b. So I have two a minus b. And then I use this trick that if I want this equation to be true for all x, then the coefficient of x on the right hand side better be the same as the coefficient of x on the left hand side. In other words, a plus b must be equal to one. So I get a plus b equals one. 
And then the constant on the right-hand side better be equal to the constant on the left-hand side. So I get 2a minus b equals 0. And so I'm left with a system of equations to solve for a and b. And if I just add these two equations, there's an elimination that, that is set up already. The b's will vanish. And I end up with 3a equals 1, which means a equals 1 third. And then if I plug in the a equals 1 third to the top equation and then subtract it, I would get b equals 2 thirds. I guess I'll write it here. Okay, so my integral has now been successfully broken down into 1 third over x minus 1 plus 2 thirds over x plus 2 dx. And each of those pieces is easy to integrate. They're both just the natural log of the thing you see in the denominator. So I end up with 1 third natural log absolute value x minus 1 plus a 2 thirds natural log absolute value of x plus 2 plus an arbitrary constant of integration.